Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll examine the risk of cardiovascular diseases associated with medications used to treat ADHD. Use of medications to treat ADHD has continued to increase across all age groups. So this is a timely analysis given continued concerns regarding the cardiovascular safety of the medicines that we use to treat ADHD. So the authors conducted a comprehensive meta-analysis of nearly 4 million children, adolescents, and adults. The specific outcomes they looked at was any cardiovascular incidents such as cerebrovascular disease, heart failure, heart disease, cardiac arrest, hypertension, tachyarrhythmias, venous thromboembolism, and so on. So I know you're all eager to know, what did they find? Well, let's start with the good news. There were no significant associations between any of the medicines used to treat ADHD and cerebrovascular disease. Specifically, there were no significant associations with cardiovascular disease for stimulant or non-stimulant medicines. So we're feeling good now, right? This is good news. Well, hold on. The risk of cardiovascular incidents associated with the use of medicines to treat ADHD did appear to be higher in patients with pre-existing cardiovascular disease compared to patients with no history of cardiovascular disease. But I should note that these findings were not statistically significant. Still something that we need to keep in mind and be on the lookout for. Remember that the FDA labeling for medicines used to treat ADHD has a warning on their use in patients with structural cardiac abnormalities or serious cardiac disease. So while this meta-analysis provides some reassurance on cardiovascular risk with ADHD medicines, there are still possible modest increased risk or associations where we need more study. The meta-analysis wasn't able to determine exactly what is the risk with pre-existing cardiovascular disease. Is there a potential for increased or a modest increased risk of cardiac arrest or tachyarrhythmias? Females with ADHD have been notoriously understudied, have different comorbidities than males, and even in this sample of nearly 4 million patients, most were male. So this is an area requiring further study in terms of the risk of cardiovascular disease. So a little confusing, right? What's the bottom line? In my own clinical experience and review of the literature, overall and in the vast majority of instances when we use medicines to treat ADHD correctly and prescribe when indicated, they pose very little cardiovascular risk. The most commonly used medicines to treat ADHD, the stimulants, they're bread and butter medications that when prescribed correctly do enormous good and are very well tolerated. That being said, both the stimulant and non-stimulant medicines can be associated with cardiovascular events changes in blood pressure, changes in pulse, teasing apart issues of underlying illnesses, comorbidity, the impact of illness itself on physical well-being, on sleep. That also needs to be kept in mind. But we also need to remember Hippocrates and the oath all of us took to do no harm, safety first. In all patients, I recommend getting vital signs, blood pressure, and pulse at baseline and then at each visit going forward for as long as the patient is on ADHD medicine. For patients with pre-existing cardiovascular disease, added caution is needed, and I recommend getting an EKG at baseline, and more frequently if there are any concerns of adverse sequelae at all. Now, I also recommend getting a cardiology consult before starting the medicines. I also realize that working in a large hospital system like I do, this is much easier than it is for some. But for your or and your patient and parents' peace of mind, it's worth it 
when you can check blood pressure, pulse, EKG, consult with a cardiologist or at the very least the patient's primary care physician. 